Hi, my name's Emma Scrafton. I'm 22 years old. Uh, originally from Auckland, New Zealand. Lived there my whole life. And I moved over to the Gold Coast at the end of last year. Um, and I am a recovering anorexic, which is a mental health illness. Uh, when I first developed it, which was now 12 years ago, so it all began when I was 12 years old. Um, growing up as a child, I was quite overweight and I started being bullied. I was bullied for being overweight. At first it didn't bother me. I was too focused on other things. You know, I was so young, I was just wanting to enjoy life. And then it started to get to me when the comments really began to hurt. Um, I was adamant that I was going to achieve this normal reality, this normal goal of mine. So I then began to eat healthier, exercise more, I cut out drug food, I ate an abundance of fruit and vegetables, and I started to lose weight. That's when people started commenting, bullying lessened, it was still ongoing, but it wasn't as much. And that's when I started to feel really good about myself. And I was like, yeah, you know, people are commenting, you look, you look really good, Emma. Like you've lost some weight, you look, you look really good. And I thought to myself, wow, if I can achieve this in a few months, imagine what I can achieve if I keep doing this. Imagine if I just, you know, if I just keep losing weight. So that's what I did. It was then a few weeks after that where I was forced to stop a lot of things. Where I was supposed to stop living with like I wasn't allowed to exercise. I was limited closely by my parents to make sure that I was eating. I was on the bus home one day from school when things were really getting serious. My mum rang me and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Why is mum calling? She picked up the phone and she just said to me, Em, make sure you come straight home. And I was like, yeah, mum, of course. That's, that's what I'm planning to do anyway. So I don't. I'm not planning on going anywhere. She was like, hey, good, I'll, I'll see you soon. I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll see you soon. Mom. Got home, and in my room was two bags packed, my mum and my oldest brother. My mum then told me, Emma, we're going to the hospital, the referral's gone through, we're going to see a doctor, we're going to the hospital, and you need to get help. At this point, I was very frail. I was bordering on a BMI of 14. I lost so much weight. I was so cold all the time. I wasn't eating anything, barely drinking water, barely able to walk properly. I was then taken to Starship Children's Hospital in Auckland, New Zealand, where I spent five and a half weeks in an intensive eating disorder unit with other girls and boys. I was fed through a nasal gastric tube for the first two weeks until I then agreed to eat. I was put on a strict meal plan, bed rest, wheelchair around the hospital, scans done every day, constant monitoring. Nurses watched you like a hawk. No hiding food could take place, no exercise. You were there to gain weight. You were there to get better. And that's what I did. I was there and I put on the weight they wanted and I got released five and a half weeks later. My parents returned home from a holiday that they had booked and I told them to go on to America. I then started back at high school. People were commenting, wow Emma, like, you're better now, like you've put on weight, like oh my gosh you're not gonna like collapse and fall over like you look like you've put on so much weight and it was these comments that people don't understand that as much as they think it helps it's really the complete opposite when someone tells you oh my gosh you're looking so much better yeah you probably think wow like yeah yeah I feel good thanks thanks and appreciate the comment however when you tell someone that's recovering from anorexia the first thing that pops into their mind, well into my mind, was, oh my gosh, I'm so fat. I've put on so much weight. So that's when it all started again. I keep telling myself and I keep telling my parents and friends, yeah, I'm so much better, I'm doing really well. I was still closely monitored. 
I went to a special outpatient clinic in Auckland, which you know monitored me. I had a dietitian, a psychologist, but I was adamant. I was adamant. No, I had to lose the weight again. So that's what I did. At this point, I was around 15, 16 years old. It was my second admission into Starship Hospital. I then began to go into another relapse. It was here where I then hit my rock bottom. Two and a half years ago, I was rushed into Middlemore Hospital in Auckland, New Zealand, when I collapsed, unable to walk. I was so malnourished. I hadn't eaten in weeks. I barely drank a glass of water. The doctors told me I wasn't going to live. They were surprised in the fact that I was still alive to that day. They were taking my observations at that, at that point in time, and I collapsed in the doctor's arms. I went into a medical coma for 72 hours. The doctors told my friend who rushed me there that I wasn't going to live and that, I, that they needed to inform my parents my family needed to know so that they could say their goodbyes to me. However, my friend never did, and I'm very grateful that she did. To this day, I thank her from the bottom of my heart, even though we aren't in much contact now, for taking me there to the hospital where I needed to be. After three days, 72 hours later, I woke up. Doctors couldn't believe it. Immediately, lines were put in the IVs. Two weeks later, I had a nasal gastric tube inserted, which goes up your nose, down your throat, and into your stomach. I was put on a rate of 20 mils per hour. 20 little mils of this nutrition formula, which fed me. Doctors were so scared that my heart was gonna fail. They were so scared that even the littlest bit of food would put me into heart failure and I would have a heart attack and die. I was unable to walk still, closely monitored, watch, had a bear hug, which is a special kind of blanket, it's a thermal blanket which they put on your bed to keep you warm because my temperature was dropping very, very low. I was on so much medication. I spent a long time here in Middlemore. I needed psychological help. I keep telling myself, I am going to do this. I am going to turn my life around. I'm 20 years old, I have to. I then decided to go to an outpatient clinic called Thrive. I was placed in there for six months. It was the longest ever stay. And here I was monitored by nurses, by doctors. I had a psychologist. He lived there. It became my new home. It wasn't until last year, just before Christmas 2016, where a light bulb went off. A light bulb went off inside my head when I discharged myself from Thrive for the last time and hospital. And I said, I have to do this. I have to get better. Emma has to do this. Having a mental illness is one of the hardest things I've ever faced in my life. It has become a part of me, but it hasn't become who I am today. My goal in life is to inspire people, to help people, to help other people who are going through this illness and to get them out the other end. Bam.